"'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except me doing the voiceover for this video. So, yeah, uh, hey guys, back with another video. I'm trying something a little different here. Rather than speaking uh, while I'm recording, I just decided to focus on sculpting and uh, to do a voiceover afterwards. So, anyways, uh, in this video, I'm talking about how to prepare your armature once you've once you've built it and posed it, what you need to do to uh, get it ready to accept putty, uh, clay, whatever you're going to use. Um, so, uh, what I'm doing right here, as you'll see, uh, I have a file, and I this isn't a must. Oh, I'm past that, but I'll tell you real quick while I'm getting some putty and mixing it. Anyways, I like to score the wire with a file uh, or something sharp just to give it a little extra tooth because, you know, the wire is pretty slippery and smooth, obviously. So if you give it a little tooth, that is a uh, big help to make sure that the putty will stick. So, um, anyways, as you can see, I just grabbed some green stuff, uh, knead it tight, and that's what I like to use for my first layer um, on a miniature, no matter whether I'm sculpting with green stuff, Procreate, Fimo, whatever, I always start with a thin layer of green stuff. So you just mix that up like you would uh, before. And a good place to start uh, here you see is uh, around the crotch area. This kind of, there, there's a lot of surface for the putty to grab onto, uh, which is a good reason to start there so you you will have should have no problems getting it to stick um, and then from there uh, what it will allow you to do is is when you're laying um, tubes of putty um, on the limbs as you'll see in a moment it gives something for the putty to stick to because it, it can be a little tricky sometimes to get the putty to stay at first on the limbs because they're just thin straight wires so As you can see here, I'm putting uh, some blobs of putty down on the feet. This is the next spot that I like to start, that I like to go for. Um, it's e very easy for the putty to stick because it uh, connects to the wire and then to the base itself. This also helps secure the miniature. Um, yeah, and then you'll end up having two uh, anchor points for your putty when you lay the legs. One at the hip and uh, one at the feet. Now you can see I'm getting the putty ready to lay on the first leg here. Uh, you just roll out a nice long piece and you just want to, sometimes it sticks to your finger, but the key here is to just try and touch it to the hip and then the foot. It's okay if it gets a little stretched and wonky at first. Um, as long as you get it, get it started, it's pretty easy to push on with a clay shaper. Or if you wet your finger, once you've got it set on there initially, you can, you can press it together that way. Uh, it's very important to try and keep this a pretty thin layer. It's very easy to put too much putty on and um, end up with a big blob. Uh, but the reason why you want to keep it thin is because if, uh, as you're adding more layers of putty later or clay, then it, it can be too bulky. You know, these are miniatures, they're small. You want fine details and, um, but don't sweat it too much, especially if this is your first time. There's a, it's, it's very difficult to get it super thin until you're really familiar with the material. And you can always trim it down after it's cured, so it's not a big deal.
Another reason uh, to do a thin layer of putty first like this is once you have this skin on the entire figure and it's cured, it's very easy to attach more putty onto the figure. You're no longer trying to get it to uh, stick to wire, which is inherently very smooth and slippery for the putty. Uh, putty likes to stick to itself, plus there will just naturally be a little bit of texture on there making it easier for it to grab. Uh, another reason is if you go ahead right from the beginning and just try and put on large blobs of putty, especially if you try and work it around into some sort of form, what will end up happening uh, is, is that the putty will tend to get pulled and stretched around the wire and inside uh, this large ball of putty will end up being a cavity uh, as the wire pushes against it. You know, you push on the side here and it condenses it and you go back and push on the other side and, and it stretches it the other way and you end up kind of slicing the inside to a degree um, which could end up having your putty uh, shift, um, not even really be attached to the wire, especially if you mold this. Um, there will be air bubbles in there. It's just a big mess. You may notice I uh, puttied around the original join. Um, that's not a must do, but it's not a bad idea because uh, for two reasons. One, it, um, it it kind of creates a additional seal around that area um, just to make it a little stronger in case the arms weren't wrapped very tightly around the spinal wire there. You'll, uh, it'll just help reinforce that area, and it, it uh, allows you to kind of smooth and blend the arms and the torso and the spine. It blends it all together, you know, with the same layer of putty uh, for that way. But again, for the arms, the arms are put on very similarly to the legs. You just roll out a, a tube. I just do it with my finger and, uh, you know, touch it to the shoulders uh, where there's already putty there. Yeah, so that's another reason, because if you do a fresh layer of putty, putty sticks to wet putty really easily. It'll stick fairly well to cured putty, but sometimes it uh, can be a little tricky. Anyways, you just want to, you know, press on the putty and get it to wrap around. Uh, a good trick, and, and it's a little easier to do on the arms here, because the uh, hands actually, you know, go off into nothing, whereas the legs go down into the bases. You know, once you press it on there initially and get it wrapped around if, if it seems like it's too bulky you can use your finger or even a knife and kind of like or even the clay shaper as you can see I'm doing right now um, you can press it down uh, push it and pull it you know towards the hand uh, off of it and then when you get to the tip and you and you have a large bulk of putty you just kind of pinch it off This last bit is for the head, um, you know, just like everything else, you lay on a thin skin of putty, but uh, sometimes what I'll do for this one, this is one area where if I have, especially if I have a little putty left over, uh, once I've got the initial skin on there, I will put just a little more on there, not trying to do a lot of sculpting or anything, but just to kind of suggest the, the shape and bulk of the head a little bit more, um, just so I don't have to do it later. But at the same time, you know, you have to be very conscious that you're not creating an air bubble in there by pushing it around too much. Um, 
So just add a little little bits. You don't even have to worry about it, making it smooth and crisp. Well, that about wraps it up. Let me know what you guys th thought about this format. Um, it's kind of neat. Uh, it's weird trying to time what I'm talking about, but uh, at the same time, it was it was helpful to, for me to just be able to concentrate on sculpting. So, uh, and hopefully, you guys could still catch a lot even with the time lapse. Um, but that you know makes it so these videos aren't. Uh, super long to watch. Well, anyways, Merry Christmas.